you can't really get away from the idea that whatever's going on in the brain, you know, it may not be going tick, 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 but on a functional level, it's acting like a clock. Well, in the same way as you perceive uh, I don't know, sound or colour, you also have a sense of um, duration, so how long things last for. And it turns out this sense is, is really good. It's, it's a lot more precise than you ever think it was. For example, I could play you two tones and they would only differ by, say, a tenth or a hundredth of a second. Um, and you could easily tell the difference between the two. So the general idea is that we've got some kind of sort of internal clock that you can use for measuring events. Where is this clock and how does it work? Uh, well, that's the $24,000 question. Nobody knows. There doesn't seem to be one bit of the brain that's going tick, tick, tick. The idea that we've got a clock is, is quite, it's quite it's a, as a metaphor, it works quite well. Because um, I can get you to uh, time an event, um, stop timing and then start timing again. So you can kind of use it like a stopwatch. And we know that in certain situations I can make that clock run faster or make it run slower if you're excited or if you're bored or this kind of thing. Um, but where it is in the brain, we haven't really narrowed it down, yeah. I could talk for hours about that, but yeah. How can something as fundamental, as interesting as this, not be able to be nailed down? What's, what's stopping you? Well, two things. Historically, it, it's, it's not been a, a great area of investment. Not enough people have spent enough time on the problem. The other, the other problem is that we were kind of guided initially by animal experiments. Um, and there was quite pervasive evidence that uh, this internal clock was in a particular brain area. But it, this didn't seem to transfer very well to human beings. It seems to be a much more diffuse system across the brain. So it's, it, when you put people in a scanner and get them to do timing tasks, almost all parts of the brain light up. So it, it's very, it doesn't seem to be a very specific area of the brain. S some people will argue vehemently that it's in the basal ganglia. Other people will tell you it's in the cerebellum. Um, other people will tell you it's, it's um, frontal areas of the brain, the TMA, TMS. So yeah, the jury's still out, yeah, but people would, would argue vehemently against me that yes, we've definitely found where this area is. How do people keep time? Do they tell you? Are they, are they counting? Are they guessing? How do most people keep time? Um, it depends on how long the thing is that they're timing. So, so yeah, you're right. So, so humans have this interesting but also quite annoying if you're doing experiments habit of doing uh, chronometric counting. So they do 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, or 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, or whatever the vocal trick is. Um, so they can count out seconds, and, and they're pretty accurate at this. Um, and it's quite interesting to study that in its own right, wh where this comes from and how a second gets kind of ingrained. But the problem with it is it tends to kind of uh, wash out or uh, mask the actual underlying timing system that you're interested in. Um, so typically in our experiments we, we get around this in one or two ways. One is to use durations that are really short, like shorter than a second. Surprisingly, humans can still time at this, this short level really, really well. The counting strategy is just no use anymore. Um, or the other, the other option is to get them to do something else at the same time which stops them from doing it. So you get them to do some other verbal task at the same time as timing so they can't use this chronometric counting. What are people not good at? They're, they're not good at um, predicting how long something's going to take them to do. Particularly if it's something they've done a lot. So you, you get this, uh, what's it called, the familiar road phenomena. So if you get people to estimate a journey, how long is it going to take you to drive from A to B? If it's a journey they make all of the time, they underestimate how long it's going to take them to do it. And it's the same with tasks as well. If you, if you ask, ask them to estimate how long is it going to take you to, I don't know, mark this essay or something like that, if it's something they've done a lot, they always underestimate how long it's going to take. And what are we really good at? What, are he, what, what amazes you about our time ability? Um, really that people can do it on, su on such a short level. So if I, if I take you into a laboratory situation, you can tell the difference between durations which differ by a tenth of a second. <laughs> you know, I can get it to that degree of accuracy. Or, or people can do tricks, so I can give you a duration, a tone or a light that lasts a certain amount of time, show you another one, I'll ask you, you know, um, subtract this duration from the other one, or add them together, or here's three durations, I want you to average them, or I want you to express this duration as a percentage of the other one. And people can do this to such a good degree that it really kind of, you can't really get away from the idea that whatever's going on in the brain, you know, it may not be going tick, 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 but 
on a functional level, it's acting like a clock, that they really do have this, this ability to time things. It's quite impressive. And, and often people will complain when, you, when, when you're giving them the task to do, they'll be saying, this is impossible, I can't do this. this is, yeah. But they'll, they'll give you the response anyway, and you look at the data, and, and with few exceptions, they're pretty, they're pretty good at the task. The ability to time probably has um, practical implications. If you, so if you think evolutionary, we, get, we, we can't just, it's not just we, we have this trick that's come out of nowhere. So there must have been some evolutionary pressure for this. Um, and certainly if you look at animals, having a sense of time is actually really important. If you imagine people, uh, animals foraging, for example, if you've got a measurement of how long you've been foraging for, then you can make a judgment about whether you're getting enough reward for the investment you're putting in or whether it's time to move on to a different area. So they, you can see that there would be a pressure for you to have some kind of timing system. Also, you can, you can imagine that there's certain prey or predators only occur at certain times of day or certain times of the year. So if you've got a way of predicting or thinking or planning about the future, then that's going to give you an advantage. So it's not that we're just investigating this, this trick that humans can do. It certainly must have some um, evolutionary interest. Um, or you get um, combat soldiers talk about bullet time, so they're in a firefight and it seems as if time slows down. 